These things are causing the new health crisis. So says our government and the media. E-cigarettes are popping up everywhere. They've got serious potential harms. Vaporizers or e-cigarettes let people get a hit of nicotine without actually burning tobacco. So the government scares people about it. The FDA warning about liquid nicotine. Scientists say it can change your brain. But vaping is a much less harmful way to consume nicotine. Extraordinarily less harmful. I mean, it's about 95% less harmful than a normal traditional cigarette. Michelle Minson of the Competitive Enterprise Institute studies vices like vaping. She concludes... We should really be encouraging people to use vaping, and there's only a couple ways... We're encouraging people? Absolutely, because there's no... There's no controversy at this point, the fact that vaping is much less harmful than smoking. Actually, there is some controversy. E-cigarette battery suddenly exploded. Some vaporizers are defective. But most important, vapor contains harmful chemicals too. Nevertheless, vaping is far less harmful than smoking. It's nicotine that makes both e-cigarettes and regular cigarettes addictive. But nicotine itself isn't that bad. It's a stimulant. And similar to caffeine. Similar to caffeine? On the spectrum of drugs that you can become addicted to, nicotine and caffeine are very similar to each other. Enjoy a cigarette. But tobacco smoke contains 7,000 other chemicals, some of which cause cancer. Taking in nicotine is not as harmful as inhaling smoke from the burning of paper and tobacco leaves. What's harmful about nicotine is how it is delivered delivered through cigarettes, it's incredibly harmful, incredibly deadly. By contrast, while e-cigarettes may deliver these big puffs of smoke, the smoke is mostly flavored vapor, less likely to harm anyone. Also, it doesn't smell as bad as cigarettes. Somebody who's vaping a huge cloud of vanilla, cherry blast, whatever they're vaping, is way more pleasant than standing next to somebody who is exhaling smoke from a combustible cigarette. So these are less intrusive and safer. So what does our government do? There's an epidemic spreading. It launches campaigns against vaping. Your kids are not an experiment. Protect them from e-cigarettes. Actually, kids have been vaping a little less since 2014, according to data from the CDC. But recently, there was a spike. The only explanation I can come up with now is that the CDC and the FDA has been doing the most advertising of these products by talking about them so much. Young people should never use these kinds of products. Telling children you shouldn't be doing this thing is not necessarily going to make many of them say no. Maybe makes it more attractive to them. Kids are going to the bathroom, smoking it in stalls. Next thing you know, you're hooked like that. My former employer, ABC News, is eager to talk about the dangers addicted to nicotine before they even graduate from middle school. Recently, they ran more than a dozen scare stories about vaping. Another recent study suggests that e-cigarettes are a gateway to traditional cigarettes. A gateway to traditional cigarettes. If someone is going to use cigarettes, they're probably going to start with an e-cigarette first. However, some children who might have gone on to use actual cigarettes might just stop with e-cigarettes. If I take a puff of this, I get, oh, that smells good. What is that? What flavor is that? If I smoke a cigarette, I get funny looks and, you know, brush shoulders. Do we want children to become addicted to anything? No, no one's gonna say they want kids to become addicted. But keeping a small percent of teenagers from trying e-cigarettes is not worth sacrificing adults whose lives could be saved. Why not ban all these things? They're all bad for you. And that would be a tragedy for public health. A really good example of this is what happened in Europe with something called snus. Sweden was built on premium quality snus. Snus is a moist tobacco chew that has been banned in the EU for about two or three decades now, except for in one country, Sweden. And Sweden currently has the lowest smoking rates and the lowest lung cancer rates of any EU country. The EU's banning the tobacco alternative didn't work out very well. If we do this with e-cigarettes, it would be as bad as what the EU did with snus. We've seen this with vaping already. Cities across the country are starting to ban e-cigarette use in public. Uh, the states that have enacted, you know, over 21 to buy e-cigarettes or over 18, the teenage smoking rates go up again. Because when teens who want to do something like smoking can't get a hold of e-cigarettes, they just go to smoking. It can release dangerous chemicals like formaldehyde into your bloodstream. Children aren't the only people seeing these ads. Uh, five years ago, very few adults believed that e-cigarettes were as harmful as smoking. And now, thanks in large part to these government warnings, adult smokers think that 
vaping is as harmful or even more harmful How many adult smokers smoking. think that? We're talking on the order of 60% at this point. So it used to be- It's just wrong. 30, and it's dead wrong. There are a few lunatics out there who say that e-cigarettes are more harmful based on zero evidence, but every legitimate rational scientist who's investigated this issue has said, we don't know all the risks, but we can say that they are less harmful than smoking. Now, Minton's think tank has received some money from companies that make e-cigarettes. But best I can tell, her science is right. Vaping is a safer alternative. You may think it's unusual that Minton spends all her working time studying and writing about vices. What's wrong with you? Alcohol, gambling, vaping. 11 years studying this stuff. Why? I like some of those bad things personally, and it's also personal for me because we're talking about the essence of what it is to be a free human being, which is to make decisions about risk in your life. There's nothing more fundamental than to human choice than being able to decide for yourself what kind of risks you want to take with your body, with your money, with your life. So it's a fundamental freedom for myself that I want to protect, not just for other people, but also for them.